You are listening to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast, brought to you by Community Christian School in Tallahassee, Florida. Hello, and welcome to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast. My name is Tom Argersinger, and I'm your host today, and this is Kelly Allen, my co-host. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Tom. On the Gospel Center Education Podcast, we explore how we as Jesus followers can connect the dots between education, contemporary culture, and biblical theology, and live like Jesus in this broken and challenging mm-hmm. world. And today, we're going to talk about um, our guest last week, which was Dr. Nari Jeter. Mm-hmm. Um, she was such an interesting guest. Um, and she said a lot of things, mm-hmm. um, a lot of important things. Yeah, mm-hmm. that I'd really like to reflect on. on yeah, this, let's do that. Yeah, this what, first what were part. some of your takeaways there? What, what was, do you remember about that? Yeah, um, she said a lot of things, but I took some notes on some of the things that she said. One thing that I thought was really interesting mm-hmm. about her is that she is a professor at um, FSU, has you know hundreds of students. I think she said five hundred mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a year. Wow. Um, that she's able to teach this family class yes um and not only um just the value uh in the in the lives of her students that she's able to um she's able she's able to teach them a life skill they're always going to have a family yes good um and so that's something that they will take with them um beyond the college years um but that she's able to still talk about um the fact that she is a christian yeah um, that's interesting in itself, right? Because yeah. that's not really the way, the narrative. Yeah. Um, we've had conversations with other guests, you know, mm-hmm. in, in past episodes, you know, where it can be very difficult. Mm-hmm. But I wonder if, because I remember Hannah Osterby was on a while yeah. back and saying, yeah. you know, it's very difficult as a student. Yes. I wonder if part of that is the difference between being a professor, yeah. where you can kind of do what you want to yeah. a point, you know, I mean, as yeah, opposed to a student your, where you're yeah. in the subordinate role. Yeah. Yeah, um, I agree. I think, you know, uh, as as a student, you would probably go in feeling, um, mm-hmm. you know, a little more anxious about mentioning your faith. But she does, she is able to do that in her yeah. setting. And she called herself a seed planter. Yeah, it's good. Which I thought was really great. It is great. Um, one of the things that she had said was, um, we asked her, uh, is it normal? Or I, I had asked her, if it, is it normal for parents to feel anxiety? Right. Um, Because I know personally I do, and I know I've talked to a lot of parents who feel anxiety in their parenting style. And she she said that we will, we will definitely feel anxiety in our parenting parenting style. But a lot of it has to do with the trauma that we have personally gone through Mm -hmm. in our own lives. And, um, And she said, wherever the hurt is, that is the place where you've got, where you have to go and unpack. Yeah. Um, what a powerful statement that is when you think about it. Yes. And the, the, the tricky thing probably is that we probably all have some sort of micro traumas or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, my son-in-law, as you know, is an is a army psychologist. Mm. And he, he would say that sometimes in America today, we throw around the word trauma mm-hmm. a little too much. Yeah. Because trauma technically, apparently from a, a true psychological standpoint, is really reserved more for the the larger events Mm -hmm. uh, in our lives. Mm -hmm. But regardless of how we use the term, whether it's micro trauma or capital T trauma or whatever it is, the the point being is we all experience a lot of those woundings essentially. And then, and then she's saying that becomes a kind of a source or where a lot of the struggle emanates from. Yeah. For instance, say if my parents had abandoned me in some way, Mm -hmm. you know, if I had to go to a work meeting, then I would feel that, you know, kind of anxiety. Like I was abandoning my kids, not able, not being able to spend time with them. Right. Um, And, and she said, if it's not healed, it it will be passed down Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. because we, we show those anxieties in certain ways in in our parenting. And I just, I thought that was so interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, And I wonder if it affects our marriages. I think she said, you know, that there's a sense in which even, even prior to kids, sometimes mm -hmm. I think those also have effects on how we deal with our spouses. Yeah. And then that in turn, you know, gets, gets, uh, almost like a cer- certain part of a legacy, which we're going to talk about in the second half of the podcast, yeah. just in general. Yeah. So I wonder if that's also, you know, the struggles that we see in marriages mm-hmm. today, which certainly here at CCS, you know, we're, we're able to walk with a lot of people in a lot of very complex mm-hmm. situations in their homes, mm-hmm. you know, 
uh, which is not just here, but it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wonder if that's also part of it. So we're bringing it into the marriage. Yeah. And then we also bring it into our parenting. Well, she mentioned how um, her and her husband have um, different things that they're, they're anxious about. And mm -hmm. she had mentioned that her, her husband is a retired law enforcement officer. So yeah. he's um, really concerned about the children's safety. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas um, she, she found her comfort in school, she said. Yes. And so she was really concerned with, you know, their education. Mm -hmm. And so, I, you know, I, I imagine that that does cause you to butt heads with your spouse when mm -hmm. you have different priorities <clears throat> because right. based on different micro traumas that, yeah, yeah. you know, you've experienced. No, that's a great point. And I think that that clash of values, I think, <clears throat> um, and I don't want to get too far into a real big picture here, but I think that's something that's affecting America as a whole right now. Yes. I think a lot of these things that we're seeing, not only on the educational front, but really on the cultural front, there's just seems to be kind of a clash of values, at least to a point, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, in, in this whole thing. And I think without that, so what's going to be tough, it's tough to bring resolution mm -hmm. to situations when there's a major class clash of, of values. Mm -hmm. So I think, I guess, part of the work then is it first, I guess, to recognize that, right? Yeah, recognize it. She said, um, again, she said, it, it, you have to unpack it. Mm -hmm. And so how do you do that? Yeah. Um, it's really hard to be vulnerable. Yeah, it's, and it's tough to unpack stuff by yourself. Yeah. I think people that are very introspective, like have more of a, a contemplative personality maybe, mm -hmm. they, they, they're a lot better mm -hmm. at unpacking things by themselves. Mm -hmm. But... And that's only, I think, the last statistic I saw was in America, for instance. I think that's like 25% of the people, mm -hmm. 20, 25 percent. So I'm not sure the exact statistics around that. But the bottom line is the majority of people don't really carry that personality. And mm -hmm. so therefore, um, they are not so introspective, maybe, or not so self-reflective. Right. And that must be especially difficult. Yeah. Well, it's it's hard to unpack uncomfortable things. And yeah. And then there's that, right? Yeah. It's not just a thing. It's an uncomfortable thing. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, she <clears throat> said, she said, <clears throat> number one, you do need to have compassion on yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Know that you're you're trying, you're doing your best, but you do need to unpack it with friends or, yeah. or a small group or possibly even a therapist. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good because vulnerability is scary. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that probably isn't talked about quite as much because mm -hmm. we tend to be very prescriptive about, mm -hmm. well, this just this is not what she was saying at all, but sometimes what it comes across to other people, people that are struggling is, yeah. well, just do this. Yeah. You know, here's a Bible verse, mm -hmm. or here, just, you know, just do this thing and it will you'll be good. Mm -hmm. That's the way they perceive it. Now, that may not be what people are saying, but that's what they perceive. Mm -hmm. and, and somehow, intrinsically, they understand that the answer is more nuanced than that. Yeah. It's not quite as simple. Yeah. That's true. And it, everything that's all true, like we, we can't really generally unpack these things by ourselves because our own personal biases get involved also. Yes. They, we don't always recognize. We don't always recognize. There, mm -hmm. there is, you know, there is, I think there's a part of our biases that are, are, are not surfaced. Yeah. And so we don't really know. And so therefore, we, we need someone to help us drill down on that. Yeah. The, the tricky thing, too, I think, is in our culture, I think we're also in, we're still less so now than maybe five years and further back ago. Um, but we're also kind of in that post-enlightenment culture where we were hanging on to certain threads of the enlightenment season of history, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which really was that post-Renaissance time yeah. where that said, you know, um, thinking is the most important thing and therefore knowledge is the most important thing. Yeah. And and so therefore the idea is if you have a problem, the way we're going to fix the problem is I'm going to teach you more stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I teach you more stuff, then you're going to be all right. And now we have so much information coming at us. And now we have so much information. We can't, we, we're, we're struggling, I think, with processing and interpreting this. A little later we'll, in the, the episode today, we'll talk a little about some of my experiences with some global conversations around AI and uh -huh. education and things. Uh -huh. There's just so much mm -hmm. that we're just, yeah, exactly. We're like, what? And so, so I think one of my main takeaways from what she was saying was all true Many people do need more information. We assume they know, but they might not. Yeah. But I think for a lot of people, 
I think they maybe they know the right thing. They know I'm not supposed to be this anxious. I'm not supposed yes. to. This isn't right. Yeah. And I know I'm not connecting with people because I feel isolated. Mm -hmm. But I'm afraid of the vulnerability. So there's there's the emotional. It's more than just information. There's an emotional component. I agree. Yeah. Just to sum that up, people are afraid of the vulnerability. <laughs> vulnerability. So they don't want to talk to people about it. Therefore, it doesn't the light doesn't get shed on the issue yeah. and you're unable to unpack it and right. work through and it. And so essentially you get stuck yeah. in that place. Mm -hmm. And that's, unfortunately, I think that's where a lot of us can end up, you know. I agree. In that. And I think also, because we're always trying to connect, like, like you always say at the beginning, we're trying to connect the dots between mm -hmm. education, uh, gospel certain education and, and whatever is going on in culture. In mm -hmm. this case, we're talking about anxiety and parenting mm -hmm. and then biblical theology. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that from a gospel centered paradigm, mm -hmm. that's not the intention that the Lord has for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, rec he realizes, God realizes that life is complicated because of the fall of mm -hmm. man mm -hmm. and the after effects that we're feeling now. We all do sin, sin is real. Uh, but I heard somebody say recently, uh, I think it was uh, my pastor actually, Josh Hughes, was saying that um, a lot of times the, the problem with sin is not that we're, not primarily that we're behaving wrong, it's that we're loving wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really fascinating. Mm -hmm. In other words, our love may be misplaced mm -hmm. in that moment, mm -hmm. and that misplaced love, which gets translated over time into idolatry and various other things. So yeah, it does result in bad behavior or wrong behavior or sinful behavior, but why? Yeah. Well, we carry that sin within us, but we're also constantly as individuals, I think, trying to get three, three questions answered, right? One is, am I truly loved? Mm -hmm. Am I truly accepted? And then... Probably the most neglected of those three questions is, am I alone? Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the devastations of what's happening in so many marriages is such a, it's just, a, it is, I use the word devastation mm -hmm. after 40 years of working with folks, is that when you get to that point where, because when you've got either just tremendous um, friction and tension and just turbulence in the marriage, over a long period of time, or literally, you know, the, the new married but living separately. Yeah. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Or or divorce or whatever it may mm -hmm. be. How does that force those spouses to answer those three questions? Mm -hmm. Am I loved? Not so much. Yeah, in that situation you would feel right. unloved. Am mm -hmm. I am I accepted? Mm -hmm. but not so much. Mm -hmm. Am I alone? Yes. Yeah. And that gets, tra I think that can get transmitted. Yeah. And so as our kids are trying to answer those questions, which they clearly are. Yeah. Then I think that gets very complicated. But God's intention, <clears throat> ultimately in the gospel, the gospel says mm -hmm. you are loved. Yeah. You are accepted and you are not alone. Mm-hmm. And that's interesting that you, you said that the kids are, are trying to figure that out. Well, Absolutely. how are they going to figure that out? They're going to look at you. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to look at their, the, their parents' marriage. Yes. And, um, and that was something interesting that Dr. Jeter had ended with. Um, she said, um, as couples, we have to be doing things like honoring our marriage, creating a loving and peaceful home, modeling relational health. Mm, right, right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's, of course, then that, if you take that one step further, right? So, uh, like I, I think I was telling you a story before I got on camera today mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I can remember vividly when I was 12 years old, yeah. lying in my bedroom in upstate New York in this little farmhouse we had, my bedroom was right next to the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And I remember vividly when I was 11, 12 years old, I, I don't know why I remember that particular, uh, range of time, but, uh, I remember my parents just aggressively arguing mm -hmm. every single night. Mm -hmm. And I would go to sleep every night to that soundtrack. Mm. And that went on for, from what I remember, that went on for a long time, mm -hmm. months if not years. Mm -hmm. And so 
did that get transmitted down and did that give me things that I've had to unpack and work through? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely true. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been married for 42 near, years now by the <clears throat> grace of God. It will mm -hmm. be 42 in June. Mm -hmm. And a very understanding spouse, Allison. <laughs> but, um, but, but the real the real thing that has, what has really made that possible mm -hmm. is God, honestly. Yep. At the end of the day, because the <clears throat> deal is we've all got stuff. And you, I'm not sure you could share things also as, oh, as good sure. as your upbringing might have been. Mm -hmm. And so we've all got stuff. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but love does cover a multitude of sins. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's just so important for us to to talk about it to mm -hmm. um, allow God into that. Yeah, yeah, and so um, <clears throat> I think as we we begin to transition maybe to our next topic today, yeah. just a good transition point I think would be just a reminder that the way we try to practice in a gospel centered education, the way mm -hmm. we try to practice spiritual development. Mm -hmm. And, and emotional development is realizing that it's a three-part uh, thing. Mm -hmm. we, we, we realize that God, uh, we experience God intellectually. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before, but just to mm -hmm. review, we, talk, we, we deal with it intellectually. Mm -hmm. So there is knowledge. Mm -hmm. We need those stuff. Yeah. But we also process it relationally, mm -hmm. in community, mm -hmm. particularly. Uh, and we've talked about that, and Dr. Judy was very big on that. Yeah. And then we also experience God experientially yeah firsthand mm -hmm. and that's that point of of just putting yourself before the lord on a regular basis and just listening yeah and speaking with him in prayer and reading the word and actually meditating on it yeah so those three things those three things are i think crucial i think the experiential is the one that's often overlooked today yeah. more mm -hmm. could be in the evangelical world at least mm -hmm. And then that tra kind of translates into our next topic, which yeah. is uh, just the idea of legacy. Yeah. And the kind of legacy that, that we're trying to leave as a gospel-centered school. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, so the translation would be something like this, I think. The, if, if that's the way we're trying to interact with God, and mm -hmm. the, on the intellectual level, the, the relational level, and mm -hmm. the experiential level, mm -hmm. then what sort of legacies do we want to leave this was just the God was really exercising me on this over the last actually last weekend, and and uh, just in prayer and and saying, what what kind of legacy do we want to leave? Me as a dad, what mm. kind of legacy do I want to leave? Mm -hmm. um, and then as a school, you know, what do we want to leave? Mm -hmm. And I think it boils down to three different kinds of legacy. Mm -hmm. But before I go into that, I want to say, we don't get to choose our legacy. Right. Hmm. We would love to be able to go, hey. That doesn't sit well with me. Right, right. <laughs> I want to be able to, I I want know, to right? choose my exactly. the legacy. We would love to be able to design a legacy. Yeah. And say, this is the picture. Mm -hmm. and, and give it to our kids or give it to our students and go, here's how you should remember me. Yes, <laughs> you know? yeah. Here's how you, you should remember your, your experience at Community Christian School mm -hmm. or, or wherever. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but that isn't exactly the way it works. Mm -hmm. Because I think ultimately there's a sense in which God causes and enables the legacy hmm. because the legacy just emanates from us showing up yeah. and living every day. Mm. Now, that can be done intentionally, mm -hmm. and that's kind of where I'm at. It's like I want to be intentional, mm -hmm. but I can't guarantee a legacy. In fact, yeah. I've heard people say if you're talking about legacy, you've missed the point hmm. because you can't do anything about legacy. Um, I don't agree with that fully. I think you can, like I said, be intentional yeah. about how you live. Yeah. But let the let God take care of the actual legacy. Yeah. I think that's kind of what I, where I would be. Yeah. So ultimately, for CCS, the context for this, and there are three parts to the legacy, but the context for that three part legacy is the fact that for a gospel centered school, gospel in gospel centered education, I would say that the end game. The big why mm -hmm. of why we do everything mm -hmm. is missions, mm -hmm. is kingdom missions. Mm -hmm. Some people would say, well, the point of school is to get a diploma. Check, move on. It's not the way we see it. That is hopefully going to be the outcome, yeah. one of the outcomes. But that's not the end game, right? That yeah. is a thing, but it's not, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a thing, but it's not the end game. We're, we're saying much more than that. We're saying 
we do have an intellectual legacy. Mm -hmm. We want to have kids graduate and know a lot of important things, be able to connect things, to be creative thinkers, to be collaborative thinkers, mm -hmm. to be critical thinkers, to think well, read well, speak well, write well, all of those things. Uh -huh. Yes, and mm -hmm. amen 100%. But there's, but why? Yeah. Again, it's, keep going back, that old really annoying game. Well, why? And you could just keep asking, right? Well, why is because, what's the reason why you go put yourself through all that? Mm -hmm. Well, because the end game is missions. It's a complex world. Yeah. And we need to have, to have the ability to think well in order to engage with a complex world. Yeah. If we're not just going to go and start a compound in Montana, Montana yeah. mm -hmm. then we're going to be involved with the real world. And that's why I love CCS so much because, you know, I don't know that all schools are doing that or even <clears throat> communicating that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might be, but they're not, you know, I haven't heard them communicate yeah. the why they do what they do, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and I hope people listen to this podcast because you just don't realize that there is a deep underground why as to why CCS does everything right. it does. Right. It's very true. You know, we, we, we have all these things that, that I tend to write in a propositional form. You yeah. Because I think, uh, we've been talking about this, yeah. I tend to think in outlines. Yes. Whereas a lot of people don't, like yeah. they think in pictures. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, but I like, I like having things in their lock, right? So we have three core programs, for example. We, right. have, we have, you know, rigorous biblical worldview education, uh, the academic side. Uh -huh. And then we have uh, kind of the, the strong hands to serve side, the, the idea that we have a leadership program and we're building character and leaders and all this. Which and then, to me would be just a wonderful visual. Yeah, like we just, we yeah. just need it to explain it, this. <laughs> yeah, I am totally visually challenged. It's very sad. I mean, it's, it's, it really is because I can think about this stuff, but I really need other people to come along and, and go, oh yeah, this would be a great like graphic design. Yeah. And all of a sudden, a lot of people would go, Oh, exactly. that's what you were this trying to say. This is why we're stuff. doing what we're doing. Right, exactly. Yeah. And then, and of course, spiritual formation, you know. So then yeah. we've got kind of our three core values, faith, honor, calling. Mm -hmm. So we've got all these, these frameworks that we hope will help us be intentional about legacy here at CCS mm -hmm. and in other schools that are gospel-centered schools. Mm -hmm. um, but so we, so we have that intellectual legacy, which is that biblical worldview piece Thinking well with compassionate discernment. Mm -hmm. Discernment is that hugely important skill today. Um, we also want to have a spiritual legacy. Mm -hmm. That idea of being gospel-centered in our discipleship, gracefully walking with the Trinity towards maturity. Mm -hmm. But then we also, and this is kind of a little bit of a mini revelation for me and mm -hmm. for us mm -hmm. recently in our conversations here at CCS and with other, uh, other people around the world, actually, in various ways. Um, that there's an ethical legacy that we want to leave, mm -hmm. which seems like really odd in a way. It's like, what do we even mean by that? Yeah, what does that mean? I think that means essentially we are we are ourselves, and then trying to transmit to our students and our families this idea of making godly choices. Yeah, and that gets tied up in what we were saying before, which is, are we are we understanding that it's about loving rightly mm. and ordering our loves properly, as Augustine would say. Uh, St. Augustine, or, and, and then also behavior follows from that. Mm -hmm. So if we get our loves ordered properly, then behavior makes more sense. If what we value and prioritize and love mm -hmm. properly in, the, in godly and, and biblical order, mm -hmm. then the behavior tends to follow that. So I think for a gospel-centered school, we don't want to focus just on, here's a good example, one of my least favorite topics because it's complicated and it's hard to deal with, <laughs> dress code. Yeah. It's tough, mm -hmm. but if you just focus on behavior, don't wear that shirt or don't wear what, whatever it is or stop doing whatever it is. Really, it's about values and about what you love the most. Yeah. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. Maybe it cycles back to what we were saying a minute ago. Maybe we're trying to, to feel loved and feel accepted and not be alone and not mm -hmm. stand out, right? So I'm going to dress like a certain group of people because I want to be like that group. Mm -hmm. So, so I think there's there's that. There's also an even more a field for for people in Christian schools. Really, is the idea of kingdom justice. Yeah. yeah that's a thing that just you don't hear talked about a lot in Christian schools. Mm -mm, you don't. And so that's why in a gospel-centered school, we have to understand, I think, that 
the gospel ultimately is all about justice in a way mm -hmm. because God with a substitutionary penal atonement concept of uh, theologically, you know, God sent Jesus in order to pay that penalty for our sins mm -hmm. that we could not pay ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there was no one else, no other being could pay that penalty. So Jesus came as God, fully God and fully man mm -hmm. in order to pay that. Mm -hmm. And so because that's true, he satisfied the innate justice mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. That he's a just, he's loving, and he's just. Yeah. And so God, Jesus had to bridge that gap so that we could live eternally with him, right? So that's the, that's the, the core of the gospel. Yeah. But the gospel of the kingdom is the, is the continuation of the basic, that basic atonement mm -hmm. part to say, how do we then live, as Francis Schaeffer asked in the book title, how should we then live? Yeah based on that. And the idea then becomes, as we live, as we learn, we're supposed to be serving those who are weak. Mm. And is it, does that explain the service projects that CCS does? <laughs> I think at one level it does. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a, that's a good, good uh, point to bring up because I think at a very, a very straightforward, tangible level, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. But it, it goes deeper than that too. Okay. Because it also is, is how do we become a voice for the voiceless? Okay. And one of the ways we do that here, for example, yeah. something we're going to be talking about a little later on uh, in, our, in an episode mm -hmm. is a program that we're working on that will expand our special ed footprint, mm -hmm. how we serve the number of people we can serve with special education. Mm -hmm. That community is a large and growing community, mm -hmm. but there's very much a sense within some, in some within that community that says, we do feel kind of marginalized. Mm -hmm. And, and do, are, we, are our kids as good as a kid maybe who is not challenged, mm -hmm. maybe in intellectual ways or mm -hmm. whatever it might be? Mm -hmm. And so, and, and there's this, this really strong sense that we have from the Lord, this calling that we have yeah. that says, yes, yeah. they are equivalent. Mm -hmm. and they're, and meaning that they have the same worth yeah. that every other kid has. Mm -hmm. But in schooling, it's sometimes get that gets lost, right? Yeah, yeah. And so one of the things a gospel centered school would do mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. is to make sure that that program is is robust. Yeah. And can serve a pretty wide swath. You can never serve everyone, mm -hmm. but a wide swath or a wider swath of people. And I'm really grateful for the efforts here at CCS because we're able we've been able to do that for a number of years. Yeah. And I think do it pretty well. Yeah. And then to be able to expand that, uh -huh. so that's that's a little deeper, a little deeper view on what it means to exercise serving the weak yeah. or serving those who who are marginalized in yeah. some way. So these these are things that you're not only <clears throat> facilitating, but you're also allowing others to do the same, like allowing the students to do the same. Like right, because ultimately it's teaching, right? And yeah. We're here to teach, mm -hmm. and, and uh, we're trying to teach with those three things in mind, the intellectual, relational, experiential. Mm -hmm. experiential. So we, by having students in our school who are not, and I'm just going to use this, this straightforward thing, it's like they're not all beautiful, mm -hmm. they're not all perfectly dressed, they're not all brilliant. Mm-hmm. Because that's just the way it is, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and in the kingdom, that's not only okay, mm -hmm. that's good. Mm -hmm. So because ultimately the gospel is for available for everyone. Yeah. And the gospel does answer those big questions in life. It does remind us and tell us that we are loved, accepted, and we're not alone. Yeah. And so therefore, it makes sense for a gospel-centered school to major on that issue. Mm -hmm. So along with the intellectual legacy, along with the, the, the spiritual legacy that we hope to leave by God's grace, mm -hmm. which is basically people walking with Christ into their futures, uh, we want to leave an ethical legacy as well, as well mm -hmm. to, to kind of um, generate or ignite mm -hmm. in our, our core, what we call our core our faculty and staff here, but also with our kids, yeah. the idea that there are people in this world who are different than you. Mm, mm -hmm. You may have noticed. Mm -hmm. And that's good. It's not only okay, it's good. Mm -hmm. And God's love expands beyond your peer group. Yeah. Beyond the people that look like you, 
who think like you, because the kingdom is a, a broad, a, a largely broad group of people who have all decided and bought into the same reality that that Jesus really is Lord yeah. of all, mm-hmm. not just white people or black people mm-hmm. or, or Asian people or smart people, mm-hmm. or for that matter, just people who are challenged. Right. It's everyone who comes to Jesus. The ground is level at the foot of the cross. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, to me, the most exciting thing about being in gospel Center education is you get to talk about that openly. Yeah. You get to live that on a daily basis. Yeah. And uh, I could probably talk about that for a lot longer, but I won't because we're coming to the end of our time. Yeah, it's so awesome that, you know, CCS is thinking about all of these things. And, um, you know, there's a wonderful team here Mm -hmm. in order to implement all of those things that that you talk about. Mm -hmm. Um, One of which is Jeff Collier. Absolutely. (laughs) Who we will have on next week. And I'm super excited. He leads the leadership program. Mm -hmm. Um, And there's a lot involved in that. Yep, and we're hopeful in that that episode we talk with Jeff to kind of unpack a little bit about more of the big why. You know, why do we do a leadership program? Yes, it is kind of fun in certain ways. Yeah. Yes, there's a lot of cool trips they take and everything. Yeah. But there is a a why. That's the interesting thing to me because... um, you you say a lot, <laughs> and it is it's hard. <laughs> I love that. Yes, it's hard, it's hard to digest it all. <laughs> but just to know, and I think a lot of things that you say is is the why and yeah. as to why we do <laughs> what we do. <laughs> I love that. It is so obviously true. <laughs> but it's so interesting, and I love it that there is someone like you that's you know um, that has has all of this in mind in order to um that that our kids may take a part in it well hopefully hopefully <laughs> i'm sorry that you're I attracted yeah. <laughs> there hopefully I'm sorry, there, no, no it's all good no it's all it's <laughs> it's true it's uh, i think what i hope is that by talking about the why it yeah. builds frameworks yeah for the legacy to actually happen, yes, you know, for God to do His thing, and that's yeah. my prayer is that somehow in all that, which is why we've got to find a graphic designer. Yeah, we do. We do because that <laughs> way I don't have to talk as much. <laughs> so anyway, I'll have visuals as you're talking. All right, good. Okay. Well, I think that pretty much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> picture. I think uh, I think that does it for today, and yes. so. Uh, yeah, so just as we close today, guys, we, we're so thankful for you guys sitting in with us today. Mm-hmm. And we look forward to next week's episode. And in the meantime, remember, Jesus is Lord. Take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Gospel-Centered Education Podcast, brought to you by Community Christian School in Tallahassee, Florida. You can find us online at myccs.org.